morning everybody. It's very early on a very early start to the week. Uh, I had to do Starbucks. I've run out of coffee at home. <clears throat> so, yeah. Uh, today we're going to head down to work and I wanted to check out a couple of vehicles because over the weekend I had my winter tires put on the car and I got to see underneath the car. Uh, there's no damage yet but there's a lot of scrapes and a lot of scratches and it's making me nervous about continuing to use the Cadillac in the ways that I have been. So I think it's time to get something with a little bit more in the way of ground clearance. Uh, but of course there's millions and millions and millions of options of vehicles there so I'm going to need your help narrowing down the field because my list just keeps growing. So daily driver that you can use off-road, on-road, pile up with friends, or drive alone across the country. What do you pick? Let me know in the comments below, but we're gonna hit the road. It's too dark to bother filming, so we'll fire it up as soon as the sun comes up. Well, the co-worker's got a kind of cool vehicle. It's a Jeep Gladiator. And we got the moon in the sky and the sun just rising gonna be a great start to the week. Well it's certainly not every day that a Kia is gonna catch my eye. But this one most certainly has. It is a... actually what is this? Let's go get the official rundown. So it is a Sportage. It is the X-Line Limited in a shadow matte gray. That is a very, very striking color. Uh, not something I ever actually expected to see on something like a Kia or a Hyundai, because that tends to be stuff that you see on the, the big German stuff. Like I know BMW and Mercedes have matte paint. Never expected to see it on a Kia. Very cool. Very, very cool. Definitely not something you want to take off the road though because ye, there's no buffing this paint. You scratch it, that's it. It's over. So, yeah. I'm going to go check out a couple of other things that have caught my eye recently and we'll probably make a decision on a new vehicle here in the near future. And by that I mean I'll have decided to buy something and then it'll take two years to get here. <laughs> Well, that's why I always say my videos are kind of weather dependent. Because it, it started just dumping with rain as I was leaving work. So... I was like, you know what, I'll just stop by and ask some questions tomorrow. <laughs> Didn't feel like standing out in the rain. I uh, got about halfway back to Kelowna here and then it stopped raining. Of course, right? So I uh, checked out the Bronco the other day. I uh, didn't film that one very much just because it was actually a sold unit that I was able to check out. Uh, still no two doors available, which is kind of annoying, because if I buy a Bronco, it's going to be a two door. Uh, that Kia that I just checked out, that is a Sportage something or other, uh, fancy trim level, but it's still a Sportage. Um, and if I were to go Kia, I would probably go with the other S, um, Sorento. Because that one has the slightly larger engine, and it's got the better four-wheel drive system, which is what I would be after in that type of vehicle. Now, on the topic of Kia and Hyundai and Genesis, as brands, 10 years ago, they, they weren't even on my radar. Uh, I did buy, uh, my very first brand new car ever was a Hyundai. 
Uh, the car itself had problems, but they were warranty items. And if it wouldn't have been for the terrible experience at the dealership, I may actually still have that car. But since then, the quality has just skyrocketed in those products. And, well, I look around my Cadillac. I've got heated, ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, the fancy sunroofs, stuff like that. And in a Cadillac, you get that when you spend, well, over $50,000. In a Kia, you get that when you spend about twenty. <laughs> so there's a lot more bang for buck in a Kia product. So, yeah, might actually have to consider one of those. Uh, like I said, it would be the larger of the SUVs, which goes against what I want in a vehicle, but that's the one that has the, well, the drivetrain that would actually survive. Uh, other vehicles that I've kind of considered, a couple of, uh, like your Toyota Lexus, the Forerunner, the whatever the Lexus equivalent, uh, a couple years old, those guys fetch around the same $50,000 mark. But again, those are big SUVs. I don't really want a big SUV, but I want something that I can take off the paved roads and not have to worry about doing damage to a $2,000 wheel or a $3,000 side skirt or whatever damage has happened underneath the car from bottoming out, right? That's, it's starting to bug me. Despite my ability to kind of ignore the crunching noises and stuff like that, um, I want this car to last, and clearly it's not suited for what I need a car to do anymore. So it's time to find something that will meet my needs, and hopefully checks a few of the want boxes as well. Kind of like this one did, right? Uh, I wanted to be able to go down the twisty roads and have good handling. I wanted to have good fuel economy and a comfortable ride. Well, this checks all of those boxes, but doesn't have the ground clearance. And, you know, hindsight, probably should have figured that one, but I didn't. So here we are. Uh, again, had some feedback from you guys. Not a ton, but we got to get this the conversation started somewhere. So again, what would you buy as a daily driver to do a little bit of everything, but never have to worry about just taking a left turn and ending up down a road? What would you pick, right? And then let's take budget completely out of the equation and ask the same question. Something reliable, comfortable, daily drivable, that is capable of going off-road without cringing every time you hit a bump. What would you pick? I have several that fall into the second question asked, but they don't have the reliability or the fuel economy that I would need. So it, it's kind of one of those, it, it's a tough one. So I wanna hear back from you guys. Um, I'm going to do my very best to get out and actually drive a couple of these vehicles over the next couple days. We'll take you guys with me, obviously, and I'll point out anything that I notice that is what I want and things that I don't need. But in the meantime, thank you very much for coming along on this adventure. Hopefully you enjoy my random contents and rambling nothingness. If you do, please subscribe, leave a comment, leave a like, and we will catch you on the next adventure.